Hello and welcome to my Blender to Unity Tower Defense game tutorial and in this part here we'll start adding some UI text elements as well as start laying the foundation for the logic that's going to remove uh, health and add our score and credits etc. So let's get started. So in this piece, uh, excuse me, I'm going to do a slight change of uh, tactics in terms of the way I'm going to be uh, showing you the scripts and things like that. What I noticed in the previous two tutorials was that, oh look at that, a, uh, can you believe a truck is going past just as I'm talking, my apologies. Uh, one thing uh, I noticed in my previous tutorials was that I was kind of going back with, with bugs and, and trying to fix things on the fly and I thought that may be somewhat distracting. So what I'll try and do this time is actually show you the scripts that I've already written. Um, if this is confusing, please uh, put something in the comments below and I'll see if I can work out a medium that doesn't involve you having to go back and, and change and hack stuff. So initially, if I just take a look at the scripts folder here, uh, what I did was to say, right, well, now that we've got our, um, let's just click this on, now that we've got our, our enemy waves going through, we need something to say that when it reaches the end point, that it actually does something and reduces our health, I assume, would be, would be the way to go. But obviously we haven't got any health variables set up at the minute, but we need to think about the way that these things are going to let the main game know that it's got to its uh, end destination and that we should do something about that. So what I will show you is initially is the enemy path route. And if we just quickly click in here, I'll just maximize that window so you can see what's going on here. Um, I'll just remove that new. I just did that so I could remind, remember whereabouts it was that I put this stuff. Here we go. This is a pretty common uh, model, if you like, the, uh, to create a, uh, if you like, an event-based system. So that in here we have a delegate. Me uh, function or method, okay, and this gets uh, which says reached end target action, which is saying, right, what should I do when I've reached the end target? And we'll create an event variable called on reached end target, okay. And subscribers can then add their own method to the on reached end target, and this will get called uh, from in here, and then basically anything that's subscribed to it will also get called. So if we slide down here to enemy success you'll see that uh, it's saying if on end reached end target is not equal to null then we'll run it on reached end target with the game object which is us okay so what this is going to do is it's going to call whatever uh, whatever methods subscribe to it and it's going to pass this object back in that's useful if we want to perhaps get um, another uh, script in, bit of information or or find out a little bit more I, I, initially i was just doing it like that so it wasn't doing anything but the trouble with that is it's hard for the subscriber to know what's actually uh, what's actually called it so I've actually thought I'd, I'd call it game object there okay so in order for this to work if we now go to enemy wave no not enemy wave, enemy wave handler somewhere near here we run uh, here we go we actually uh, subscribe to that method okay epr dot on reach end target okay plus equals which means add a new handler Okay, handle reached end target action. And that's saying uh, for this, where are you, enemy? Where are you in path route? Okay, for this variable, add to it another method that could get that will get called, okay, should it reach the end target. And this one's called handle reached end target action. I know it's not beautifully named, but here it is down here. Uh, handle reached end target action. There it is. Okay, reduce health, uh, debug.log, reduce health as reach target, okay, and we'll say game manager dot set health, game manager, okay, and you're thinking, well, hang on, what's the game manager? Well, let's quickly have a spin over here. This is another script that I've added. This is the one that's going to contain, if you like, all of the sort of game, in-game uh, variables and logic to sort of handle the, the overall running of the application of the game. And you can see here we've set up some, some default variables, score, credits and health. Okay, credits are going to be used to upgrade stuff. Score is your you know score for killing things. Don't know how that's going to work yet, but it's all in there. Okay, let's just delete that because I never ended up using it. My my plan was to um to um update it every single frame, but I realised that, that actually was probably the wrong way to go about it. Uh, to only update these values when uh, they actually change. Okay, so you can get the score. You get, I've made these private, you see, so that when you actually have to call these methods to actually update them or get their values. And you'll notice I've got public text score text, public text credit text, and public text health text. Well, that, those don't actually exist yet, uh, and we'll need to create a reference to those. So we've got a few things to set up in the main Unity engine here. So let's let's start by creating a a, a UI text. Okay, and what this will do, if you I don't know if you can see that yet, so let's let's just 
let's just um, press there and press F on this note press F here there we go and what this does is it creates a canvas for those of you that don't know how this works I'm not going to go into great detail but um, Unity will, if it hasn't got one already, create a canvas. All all UI elements must exist in a canvas, okay? And a text element isn't anything particularly special. It, um, it effectively just displays text on the screen, and you can update it by setting, as we saw a second ago, the text values here, okay? In scripts. Very simple. And it does it all for you, so you don't have to change anything. What I did was I set up a few variables up here. Let's just drag that across and up. Can you see as you do this, it's adjusting on the list left hand side here on the screen. A few things I'd like obviously like to change. One is the size, so let's make that 28. It needs to be nice and large. Uh, let's make it 32. The one thing that drives me mad is, is if you, you have to click on this uh, manipulator here, is make it a bit bigger so that it fits in. There we go. Okay, we'll do something like that. It's quite good to set this to a standard size. Let's try 40, that's okay. And we'll make the um, vertical alignment center. I just like doing that just because it kind of cleans things up there. Right, okay, new text. So in this text here, we'll, uh, we'll let's rename this to score text. And all that's going to do is say score. Okay. Not, not with a new line. And let's just, let's just control D that. And we'll duplicate it. We'll just rename this to health text. And that's going to say health. I keep doing that enter. There we go. And we'll just drag that one down. If we're lucky, it'll all snap. There we go. It does. Okay. You may, like I say, you may need to adjust the font size and the height here, just so you've got a decent amount of space between them. I think that font size is okay, but we're going to be changing this in a few moments anyway, so let's not go too mad. Let's do one more control D and we'll call this credits text. Okay, and then obviously we will say there credits. Okay, there, and we'll just drag that down as well. Now, that's great and everything. In fact, what we can actually do is just drag with this lot and just drag that up a bit. Look, just position it somewhere that we like. Um, but we don't like the font. This is Arial. Arial's old, boring, and tiring. This is a space game. We all, we want to find ourselves a space font. So what we should probably do is head over to uh, Google and see if we can find a decent font. Okay, so I've logged, I've logged into Google, logged into Google, I've loaded up Google, um, and I've uh, searched for space font. I think if I went over to here, I want a space font here. There's some good fonts you can do, and these are all free, by the way. Again, I would, I would be careful if you're planning on making any money out of this game that you can go ahead and buy them. In fact, I think even, even these guys say, you know, a thousand free fonts or whatever. But you can, you can certainly download this for your own um, play project. But if you intend to use it in uh, a commercial product, then please make sure you contact the the creators of these fonts so that you're not uh, breaking any copyright rules. This here we go. So this font here, I like I liked the look of Space Age. It hasn't got an upper case and lower case. They're the same thing. All right, but they do have some really rather cool um, looking characters there and all this sort of stuff here, right? So let's um, let's just download this. I think if we just click download here, how's that looking? Here we go. It's downloaded the zip for us. And we've got a spaceage.ttf. Okay, the way I've been going about this is to go to uh, documents. And uh, hang on, uh, let's go back, click on back there. Let's copy that, control C. And then go to Documents, Unity, uh, Super Tower Defense, Assets. I'll create a new folder called Fonts. Probably not necessary, but at least you know exactly where it is then. And then Control V into there. And with the magic of um, Unity, it automatically updates that Fonts folder. Okay. And now what we can do is if we got we have all of those, and if we just make sure they're all selected like that, and under Font, if we just click this little circle here. We can select Space Age and look at that. Boom, it's done it. Score health text. Now, credits. Now, I need to bear in mind the size of this. Obviously, this looks okay on my screen here now, but this could be running on tablets and things, so I might make that a bit bigger. So let's make that height 50. It's not going to make any difference there. I'm going to make that 48. Yeah, that's nice and big, isn't it? And now I'll make those wider as well. I didn't want, yeah, wait that wider. There we go, something like that, so they all fit in nicely. Might be worth considering that you might be doing it in multiple languages, so let's just increase it a little bit there, give ourselves a bit of wiggle room, and we will 
start by clicking on score, no, clicking on health, actually no, clicking on credits, just drag that out of the way, and then click on health, and just drag that so it, can you see it just clicked into position, and we'll do the same with you, Oi. there, click in, thank you, okay, so they're all nicely spaced out, um, let's just go on full screen here to see how it looks, yeah, oh, it's in completely the wrong place, Oh, and I know why. Because we need to set all of these. We need to click on this, uh, select them all. Click on the uh, rect transform here. Click on this one here. If you just press Alt, hold on Alt, and then click this top left one, that will anchor them all to the top left. And that's slightly annoying, <laughs> but it's worth doing because if I now show you, hang on, this means now that if we resize, these things will always um, anchor to the top left. So if we just grab health, health text, just drag that down now like so, and credit text, drag that down, it's right there, and then we'll select them all again, we're almost there, it's a one time job so I'm not too worried about it, there, now if we click on it, there we go, you see, and the, point, the important thing is, I might be better shown if I do it on here, is as this gets smaller, it still stays in the top left, that's possibly too big, just have a look, quick look at that again. It doesn't look too big when I do that, does it? So I'm going to go with that for now, and then I'll, I might I might tweak it later on. Um, I'm going to make it right justified, okay? Which probably means I'm going to move that to the left again, for now anyway. Okay, this is great, but it doesn't look great. Let's change the color on it. Let's change it to a, a yellow, shall we? Yeah, that's good, but it's difficult to uh, it's difficult to view it um, to see it in certain. Uh, in certain, uh, when the background is certain colours, so what we can now do is if we click on that, I think we can just do this, we've got them all selected, we'll just do add component and we'll add an outline, there we go, I'll we'll just type that in again outline and, and you can see what it's done, it's just put a black outline on it and that makes it a lot more clear okay, it's added three components, it's added a, comp uh, a component to each of those and let's keep going, there's one more thing we can do which is shadow Okay. I think that's worked. Let's just quickly. I'd like to change this to two and minus two, two, minus two, just to see this worked. There, that's good. And we'll also, if we click on here, I do think I'll lower that to 64, the alpha to 64, so it's visible, but not too much. And now let's have a look. Okay, now we're talking. Now we are talking. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty handy. Next up what we will do is we will add the actual values so we'll, add, we'll create a th in fact what I might even do is just grab those control D and drag them over is it being kind? no it's not so I'll just do it one by one yeah, let's drag that just drag that into position like so oh. obviously these are going to be called something different and contain different values there and then that one in there, so let's start with this one. So this is going to be called score value. I might call it score value text, just so that's what it what it is. Then we'll call this health value text and credits value text. So these are these are the ones that are going to contain the values. And let's set that credits to zero. Oh. Uh, health to zero. Uh, health to one hundred. Something like this. So this is, this is uh, yeah, and score to zero. Okay. Um, so obviously we need to select these three and just move uh, left. Justify them. Oh no, no centers right. Left. Okay, that makes me want to move them out a little bit. Oh no, actually, no. Control Z that, and I'll just drag that across over there something like there and then pull that across because that's never going to be that big okay actually what you can do for these is you can say horizontal overflow just say overflow so it will actually go past the let me just show you what I mean so if I go to health value here and I just keep typing it'll keep it'll keep going past if you don't do that uh, so uh, where is it um, horizontal over I just say wrap it'll get upset if I do this now if I just do this you see it will just disappear so we'll do we'll do overflow for now, it should never happen, but certainly not for health. Okay, we're looking good. We like this now. Now we have. Now we're talking. Now, let's bring in our game manager. Let's bring him in. 
we will create a new empty. We'll call we'll call it game manager. And then we'll just drag the game manager script in. Okay. And this needs those this needs these three text UIs here. Okay, because you may recall I say that a lot that the game manager needs these things here so that when you set the score, the credits or the health, okay, it updates that text. So let's drag those in there. So it wants the score text, which is you. It wants the credits text, which is you. And it wants the health value text, which is you. Okay, good. So the game manager's got everything it needs. Yes, it has. Let's click a quick spin back to the enemy path route and we can remember what this does here is it says on reach it's going to call this on reached end target so it's saying okay I've reached these this is the script that you attach to the enemy object enemy game objects so when it reaches the end it's going to find anything any method any class that subscribe to this on reached end target uh, function and it's going to call it okay so it could be, there could be more than one as it turns out there's only one for us now uh, so our enemy wave handler is the one and you can see that the enemy wave handler um, needs an instance of this game manager okay the reason it needs that is because it's going to go and set the health right, so it's going to say get health minus two all right so it's going to reduce the health by two so we've got an instance of the game manager and we're saying get health minus two all right so obviously but well not all that obviously we need to go back to the enemy wave handler which is here and i'd imagine it's missing something the game manager instance there we go Okay, so let's just get that game manager and drag it in. Did I attach the script to it? Hang on. Yes, I did. I did attach the script to it. Excuse me. Any wave handler, so I'll just drag that in. And there we go. It's got its game manager component pushed in there. So I think we can give this a try now. What I'm expecting to happen is when this, uh, when these objects reach the end here, it will, uh, this will fire. Okay. No, so excuse me. This will fire on reach end target. Our enemy wave handler is subscribed to to this and has said uh, handle reach end target action game manager set health. We're not actually using this game object yet. We're only in the debug I noticed, but we're not actually doing anything with it. But potentially we could later. So it's going to set the health and then the uh, the game manager here. When we set health, it's saying um, setting health to new health. Um, health equals new health and updating the text okay there's no actual if it reaches zero yet we haven't got any sort of logic for handling that but let's just see how we get on it's gonna take a few seconds this is quite exciting one thing that really frustrates me is the resolution of that terrain I wish I'd uh, thought a little harder about that because we're only looking at a small section we didn't need to make it to uh, uh, there's a lot of data, uh, data uh, texture that's not being seen. Oh, what? It's always handy, isn't it? Let's postpone that for an hour. Here we go. So I'm expecting now for this health to go down. <gasps> there we go. 98. It's going to go down every time now, each one of those reaches. Because remember, each one of these has that enemy path handler written on it. So it's going to be calling that function, which is being listened to by the enemy wave handler. Which in turn updates the game of uh, the game manager. Score and health, uh, sorry, score and credits aren't updated yet, but that's okay. I think we can see how we're going to go about doing that, and we've we've certainly laid the foundation for uh, for those going forward. So I think with that, I'll take I'll call this completed. I hope that made sense, guys. I hope I wasn't babbling too much, and that uh, uh, made made some sense to you. All of this stuff is, I guess, is pretty basic if you follow the Unity tutorials. There's nothing. Um, particularly uh, out there in terms of the concepts I've used so please if you've got any issues with it if I'm speaking too fast babbling or oh, I know I babble but if I'm babbling uh, incomprehensibly then please do comment and I will uh, and I will do my best to try and explain what I was talking about so thank you again thanks for watching thanks for all the, the likes the subscribes I'm just having a whale of a time here uh, I'm going to try and get another one out in the next day or two as well we're going to just keep plowing on very very shortly we'll start putting the turrets down and add the logic for those guys locking on to these uh, enemy waves and start firing at them and blowing them up and shooting missiles at them that's going to be a big bit of fun that we'll have on that one that probably be a long tutorial speak to you soon all the best bye bye